Good afternoon, I'm Vashan Brown with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Up first this afternoon, pressure is mounting on Member of Parliament for Westmoreland Central, George Wright, who is accused of assaulting a woman during an altercation. Jamaica Labour Party General Secretary Dr. Horace Chang is to meet with Mr. Wright this afternoon to get a full briefing and discuss allegations in the public domain. A news release from the JLP says after the meeting with Mr. Wright, a report will be made to the caucus of MPs who are slated to meet this evening. The JLP says the public will be kept informed of the outcome of the internal deliberations. According to the news release, party leader Andrew Holness on Monday directed the JLP Secretariat to activate internal mechanisms to address matters arising from allegations against Mr. Wright. Mr. Holness said, quote, As a political organization, we have a duty to ensure that all our actions follow the due process of the law. However, we also have a high duty to ensure matters which affect public well-being and public trust, particularly where public figures are involved, are addressed transparently and timely, end quote. Now, the Freeport Police in St. James yesterday questioned Mr. Wright in relation to a video in which a man is seen assaulting a woman. The police have also contacted the woman, who was also seen being assaulted in the video. Investigators told our news center that she will also be questioned. Mr. Wright and the woman reportedly filed complaints with the police on April 6, the date of the reported incident. The health ministry has disclosed that one person who has received the COVID-19 vaccine has died, but says there is no evidence at this time of a link between the death and the medicine. During a news conference yesterday, Director of Family Health Services at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Melody Ennis, reported that the ministry has, has so far received 76 notifications of adverse reactions, five of them serious, including a death. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie says it's important to note there is no proven correlation. And so if we have persons that would have died after getting the vaccine, then we will report it. If we've had persons who have had severe problems after getting the vaccine, then we will report it. This is how we analyze information. We look at patterns right across the world because these, these reports are submitted to the, the global um, committee that monitors these to see if there is any kind of relationship. But there has been no association between these cause of death found with COVID-19. So the vaccine is safe. It is effective. Opposition spokesman on health, Dr. Maurice Guy, says all tests must be concluded before any detailed analysis can be provided. In particular, the clinical circumstances, it, it might be mere speculation at this point in time. It might be a coincidental death. So as a medical practitioner, I'd, I'd rather wait until the pathologist and all of those investigations have been done. 83,828 people have received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine over the five-day vaccination blitz. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton said this is 12% more than the ministry's target for the weekend blitz. The total number of people vaccinated since March now stands at 135,473. The blitz weekend demonstrated that Jamaicans are interested and are willing to come out it also demonstrated when we opened up the categories that some persons were willing, were more willing to come when they had company to come. So a younger person taking an older person. These are things, the patterns, the data we are still assessing. But there was a lot that we learned during this first national blitz. And we are now going to use the next few days to assess and to return with an even better plan. So when we get into the next splits, which we hope will be not this weekend, but maybe the weekend after. Despite limited stocks of the vaccine, routine vaccination is expected to resume on Monday. The next blitz is slated for the end of the month. Most of the people vaccinated so far are aged 50 to 69. Overall, 56% of those inoculated were women, while 44% were men. Now, the government expects to vaccinate 1.9 million Jamaicans by March 2022.
to administer the second doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine in early May, health officials are warning people who have taken the first dose to ensure they get the second. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says people ought not to use the side effects as a reason not to get the second jab. Um, don't use the side effects to discourage others from taking it. They don't need to be graphic or dramatic. It's a good thing to have some side effects. Don't use the side effects to not take the second dose. Very important because final point is that as the CMO said, you lose significant protection over time if you only take one dose. And the Minister of Health is to meet with the Minister of Finance next Monday to further discuss the social and economic recovery and vaccine serve program. This following the completion of the first five-day COVID vaccination blitz exercise. Speaking at a COVID conversation last evening, Permanent Secretary in the Minister of Health, Dunson Bryan, said the incentive program is still on the table. So it is being treated like a conditional cash transfer similar to PATH in terms of uh, a, a sort of incentive for a particular um, social behavior that you are interested in in, in motivating persons to, to do. And so we will have that meeting next week and our next conversation, we will give all the details in terms of the rollout of that aspects of the vaccination implementation program. Now, under the SURF program, the government will provide $10,000 to more than 100,000 people who are 60 years and over and have been vaccinated. People 60 years and over who are not employed or receiving a pension greater than $1.5 million per annum are also eligible to benefit from the conditional cash transfer for the vaccinated CCTV sub-program. However, before they can access the payment, the Minister of Health's records will have to confirm that they have been vaccinated. Five more COVID-19 related deaths have been reported in Jamaica. The number of people who have died from the virus has increased to 697. All the deaths involve persons from the corporate area. And Jamaica's COVID-19 case count is now 43,240. 186 cases were confirmed yesterday from 834 samples. And it's now time for a break, but please stay with us. More local stories when we return. Welcome back, and we're continuing the news. The municipality of Portmore continues to battle cases of COVID-19 with over 60 positive cases of the virus within the greater Portmore area. Details were provided by Medical Office of Health for St. Catherine, Dr. Francia Prosper Chen, which was read by Mayor Leon Thomas. The Brayton community had nine positive cases, Bridgeport 11, Caribbean Estate 5, Cedar Grove 1, Christian Garden 7, Cumberland 4. Gardermead 1, Gregory Park 15, Greater Portmore 60, Elsha 6, Independent City 3, Newland 2, Phoenix Park 2, uh, my is Portmore Gardens 7, Portmore Pines 2, Portsmouth 2, Silverstone 3, Saltboro 2, Waterford 11, Westchester 3, Westmead 2. Now in the wider St. Catherine area, which was broken down into zones, Spanish Town had a majority of the cases. Portmore is zone 1, 160. Zone 2, which is Spanish Town, 157. Zone 3, Ola Arbor, 36. Zone 4, which is Linstead, 73. And they have unknown cases where the people come from is 13. Give approximately 439 persons positive case during that short period of time. Meanwhile, some 2,984 persons have been vaccinated in Portmore through the island-wide vaccination blitz from April 9 to 13. April 9 to 13, 
art academy and this is the number of personnel that was vaccine 2247 greater portmore 543 and waterford health center 192 a TVJ News follow-up now. Head of the St. Anne Police, Superintendent Dwight Powell, says the over 30 persons who were arrested last month at the Clock Tower Guest House in Discover Bay in the parish have been released without charge. The individuals were arrested following a raid by police at the location around 4 a.m. in search of a suspect in a shooting incident in St. James. We were pursuing investigation surrounding breaches of the law, reform, and fraud and conversion act. Uh, presently, uh, we are at a stalemate in terms of the investigation. Uh, so the persons have been released, and they were released and custody within um, 48 hours of being taken up. Uh, the concerns that we have as it relates to that investigation was that uh, we didn't find anything uh, credible to at least advance uh, investigation in those matters. As for the DJ who was picked up at the location? We thoroughly uh, investigated around him, uh, but uh, at, at, at the point that we were, we had to release him from custody. We may in the future have um, some questions that he will have to ask, um, answer to. Meanwhile, Superintendent Powell says 38 persons from Wilberforce in Brownstown will be facing the courts on May 3. They were arrested and charged after a police military operation discovered an illegal party on March 14. The security forces had gone in search of a wanted man when they discovered the breach. Now, back to the George Wright matter now. The attorney at law representing the Westmoreland Central MP remains tight-lipped on whether the man in the video on social media beating a woman is his client. Abel Donfoot says he's unable to give any clear word on the matter at the moment, but noted that a statement will be provided when it's appropriate. We cannot comment too much at this stage but i promise you that at the appropriate time all questions that are being sought will be answered but it is not the time for that now in the meantime the mp in question is yet to deny or confirm whether he was the man in the video to that mr foot gave this response at no point in time did he say that he was the person on the video? Neither did he deny, so I'm asking if he's that, denying. That is my answer, um, and I'm going to have to leave you now, all right? Nice talking with you. Take good care. Miss, no, hold on, Mr. Foot. Mr. Foot? Oh? Okay. And the opposition says it's, it's still moving ahead with plans to have Westmoreland Central MP uh, George Wright suspended from future parliamentary sittings until the matter of the alleged assault involving him is fully dealt with. Leader of Opposition Business in the House, Anthony Hilton, says based on his reading and understanding of the standing orders of the House of Representatives, a member does not have to be convicted before he or she can be suspended. We have more in this report. The opposition is adamant that George Wright must be suspended from parliamentary sittings until his matter with the police is cleared. Allegations have been swirling that Mr. Wright is a man seen in a video circulating on social media assaulting a woman. He was questioned at the Freeport Police Station on Wednesday in the presence of his attorney, Abel Don Foote, and released without being arrested or charged. Leader of Opposition Business, Anthony Hilton, attempted to bring a motion to Parliament to have him suspended on Tuesday, and it was shot down by House Speaker Marissa dalrymple Philibert. But he says it will not end there. The allegation, there's no other name, there's no confusion in the public space about who the likely person is. Having regard to the seriousness of the, of, of, of the, the allegation, no serious opposition would sit in the house with a member so charged without saying member the allegations are serious if there is reason to believe that you are the person that was seen in the video 
engaging in the conduct that was that was demonstrated, that was being shared in the video, and there's a need for you to answer simply, is that you? Because the conduct itself was very clear. He says the opposition will again seek to raise the matter. In the meantime, he is defending the basis of the motion he brought to Parliament on Tuesday. Mr. Hilton says it was too pronged. One of the limbs is on the basis of standing orders 24, 14, which is the motion, the substantive motion um, requiring or allowing for um, a, motive, a, a, a motion to be moved to suspend a member. Mm -hmm. The that that point, that particular provision does not require notice. It is exempted from notice. The other limb of the the motion was the matter goes forward to the ethics committee for it to be further considered mm -hmm. for any further action. Mr. Hilton, who was speaking on the morning agenda on Power 106 FM on Thursday, said the opposition was making the motion as a member had brought the House into disrepute because of the actions displayed in the video circulated. However, on Tuesday, the House Speaker revealed that the video was not clear enough to identify that Mr. Wright was indeed one of the persons involved. On Tuesday, head of the Criminal Investigation Division of the Hanover Police, Detective Inspector Carl Brown, said the woman has not been located to follow up with a statement which is needed to commence the prosecution of the matter. She was subsequently contacted and is to be questioned by the police sometime this week. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin, is reporting that the country's total spend on imports and earnings from exports for January to December 2020 have declined compared to 2019. It noted that expenditure for the year on imports fell by 26.4% to some 4,712.4 million U.S. dollars, a decrease of some 1,600 U.S. dollars from 2019. This decline was largely due to lower imports of fuel and lubricants and raw materials, intermediate goods, which fell by 48.8% and 17.1% respectively. Meanwhile, there was a decline in total exports, which was mainly influenced by a reduction in the export of alumina, which fell by 39.8% and mineral fuels by 36.1%. Total earnings from exports for 2020 amounted to 1,218.7 million U.S. dollars. Time now for sports. Sports Minister Olivia Grange says discussions for the approval of this year's ISA Boys and Girls Championships are now down to two main areas of concern. Although the much-celebrated five-day high school track and field competition is still scheduled to be contested, ISA says they are yet to get approval for the meet. But Minister Grange says talks are being held to finalize approval of the meet. Discussions are continuing in terms of how, what kind of protocol will be put in place for accommodation and for transportation, because that is where it becomes a challenge with the numbers. But those discussions are taking place, and hopefully we'll re resolve those soon. Meanwhile, there are fears new weekend curfews from Saturday, April 27, until the weekend ending May 2, could further set back the resumption of sports on the island. But to this end, Minister Grange says vaccination is the key to the sports sector returning to normalcy. Encouraging as many of our sports uh, personalities to go and get vaccinated. I know some are being vaccinated on Thursday. That too will put us in a position where we can get back to reopening the sporting sector. And that's the Midday News. I'm Vashon Brown. Join us at 7 for a primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports, and production teams, have a wonderful afternoon.